But for a second day, the procession of the Olympic torch has been anything but. Chaos has accompanied the torch's relay through Paris, where running skirmishes took place between anti-China protesters and police protecting the Olympic flame. The flame was extinguished four times, and eventually the authorities were forced to abandon the torch's progress three quarters of the way through its route and had to complete the trip by bus. The security and police escort said to be identical to that for a president was clearly not good enough. Here's the BBC's Emily Buchanan. Even a former World Hurdles champion couldn't leap past the protesters. They accosted the flame while hundreds of feet up the Eiffel Tower. And this was just the beginning. There were many more waiting to ambush. The organisers had hoped to keep the flame in a safe bubble, surrounding it with riot police on rollerblades. But everywhere there were cries for free Tibet. Protesters leapt out to snatch the torch. Several times it was put out and had to be escorted to the official bus to be relit. At one point on the Champs-Élysées, it was the bus, not a jogger, that had to carry it to keep it safe. 3,000 police officers were deployed along the route, but they struggled to keep the protesters at bay. The International Olympic Committee president has called on China to peacefully end unrest in Tibet, while at the same time he's criticised the disruption to the symbol of the Olympic ideal. We are definitely not happy with the protest. We respect the protest. I mean, there's no doubt about that. If there are protests, we respect them, as long as they are not violent. Because of the protests, the mayor of Paris decided to cancel a ceremony at the city hall. And finally, the relay itself was abandoned. The Chinese authorities asked for the flame to go back on the bus and be driven the rest of the way. The torch has become an ever greater magnet for disruption. All eyes will be on its next stop, San Francisco. Emily Buchanan, BBC News. And just to report that uh, the flame did eventually reach its destination, a stadium in the south of the city, but not quite in the way that had been planned. So what's been the reaction in Beijing to both Paris and London? The BBC's James Reynolds is there. There's been a very slow reaction here in Beijing for several hours. Chinese state-run television channels actually did not broadcast the pictures from London. But now they've slowly begun to react. In the afternoon here in Beijing, uh, an unscheduled press conference was called by the Beijing Organizing Committee of the Olympic Games, that is China's Olympic officials. They said that the protesters in London were separatists. And what they were trying to do was sabotage, but that it was doomed to failure. They said everyone in London condemned the disruptions and that the torch relay would go ahead without any more problems. I think China will only be relieved when it gets back to Chinese soil at the end of April. Nevertheless, China has now started on this torch relay. To stop it now or to change it would be an admission of failure because at the beginning of this press conference, the Chinese Olympic officials said that the torch relay was going smoothly. So any attempt to try to change the itinerary would, would have to be seen as an admission of failure, which is why they cannot change it. But uh, there was actually a change in the route in Paris. And as I say, the flame did finally reach its official destination eventually, but on time.